right, Bitcoin accumulation country. It's the Fun with Bitcoin podcast. We are in the midst of the um, COVID-19 virus, and I figured we'd have to put out some kind of entertainment. So get ready. This is season three, and this is episode 11. So joining me today is none other than Lucho Paletti. So for those that don't know who Lucho is, um, he's, uh, he's becoming a uh, predominant Bitcoin artist, I think. And his, uh, I guess his moniker or his, um, yeah, I, I mean, the, the way that you'd recognize his work is he uses, he uses the Guy Folks mask um, and he put a Bitcoin logo into the forehead. Anyways, uh, he also made a couple of other changes that obviously make it slightly different than the original mask. But I absolutely love the symbolism because I love the symbolism of Guy Fawkes. And of course, I'm a huge fan of V for Vendetta. So um, you're going to see it's a really interesting interview with with Lucho. And what you got to remember is, you know, his, his his art does does his talking. So um, this is actually going to be a little bit of a short interview, but it's, it's totally packed. Anyways, um, here we go. Without further ado, here's my chat with Lucho Paletti. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, I've got a very interesting person uh, with me tonight. Uh, he does a lot of really amazing Bitcoin art. I am a total fan of V for Vendetta and the Guy Folks mask. And uh, the work that Lucho Paletti does, I think, is absolutely amazing. I hope I pronounced your name right, Lucho. Yes, he did. Cool. And uh, by the way, I'm very, very honored to have you on my show. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I've been uh, looking forward to talking to you. Cool. Yeah, I know. It's, it's been tough, right? We've been going back and forth. And finally, uh, we actually, you know, the stars have aligned. There you go. Okay. Cool, man. So uh, we'll, we'll get right into it. Uh, I want to start off with, uh, with your rabbit hole story. I, I definitely, uh, I, right now, the only part I know is the amazing stickers that I bought from you and uh, the litho and, I, I, and the art. But I, I don't know, like, what's the, uh, what's the thinker behind the thought? Okay, sure, man. Um, well, basically, like, even to just touch on, like, my background a bit, um, I went to school for finance. So I have my, my master's actually in uh, science of finance. And, you know, you study in school like about economics and the banking system and all that. So obviously you have the background to kind of understand when you see like a, a different system, like come out of the blue, you know, and you read about it, you kind of have a little more context to like understand what the implications might be. Right. So I kind of like stumbled onto Bitcoin, just curiosity, like just, you know, kind of hearing this is a new money, but it really just operates like kind of like a like a bit torrent, like decentralized. So I really went down the rabbit hole and started like connecting all of that back in uh, 2016. Um, so I'm not like a super OG, you know, Bitcoiner <laughs> from from so many years ago. No but uh, yeah, yeah, man. What about yourself? Um, well, I mean, for me, it, I, I got back, I got into it in, uh, in late 2016. So, okay. uh, and, so, and, yeah. and, and I came to it from a medium of exchange. And for me, it's, it's more of like a technical background. And I, I'm also kind of just a, you know, like a, a doubter of the system. So Bitcoin really spoke to me on a philosophical level. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, man. But, but this so, is about you. <laughs> right. Right. I, I got you, man. So, <laughs> But I basically like I had been doing art like digital art uh, before I stumbled upon Bitcoin and all that I did like with my art was basically uh, and the reason I created my art was to, to try to convey like messages about the truth truth that like I saw in the world and like I wanted to use art to kind of like impact people. So I adopted like that propaganda style, you know, like back then cool. and um when I stumbled upon Bitcoin, I kind of like pivoted like my whole like art path where I felt like where I was, you know, a lot of the truth oriented like messages is a lot of times it's like putting out like all this, you know, all these problems, like what's wrong with the world? What's the media trying to get you to think? And, you know, all that stuff. And with Bitcoin, I felt like, you know, I finally had like I was complaining about the Federal Reserve a lot, but I didn't have like a solution, you know, so like That's with Bitcoin. Right when I really like got it, um, I started making like t-shirt designs, more basic stuff, 
but then I really started to progress like my art career uh, just doing purely uh, Bitcoin art. So um, a lot of it for me, it's been, a, you know, like I got the rabbit hole story. Um, I kind of like gleaned over like really quickly, but basically like when I got it, I realized that I should start saving. So um, when I was uh, earning my paychecks at my last job, I was just directly saving like all my savings into uh, Bitcoin and Litecoin basically. So oh, wow. now, now I would save in Bitcoin, but back then I just decided like every paycheck I'd set like a recurring, like I'm going to put X amount of dollars in there, you know? So I was doing that and I started with like some of the art and like, honestly, man, like whenever I made like pieces, like even now, like it's, it's kind of like my own exploration and like kind of like deepening my understanding about Bitcoin, you know, like a lot of times I was making like banknotes and uh, certificate style pieces like a couple of years ago. And uh, when I was writing, you know, I was putting the ideas into the art. A lot of that was like my own exploration, like why is Bitcoin important to me, you know? So kind of like my rabbit hole has always gone deeper with the art itself. Very interesting. And and I do, um, yeah, it, it's interesting that you come from a, a background in finance. I, I like that. I, I think it's interesting when people come from that background because I, I feel like people from that background are kind of a little bit more indoctrinated, you know, into the current right. system. Like you, you read so much more material about how this is all correct and how this just is, you know? Right. Like right. You're, you're supposed to just take it for granted and that's about it. But um, so let me ask you this it, with your digital uh, when you said you were into digital art even before Bitcoin did. Um, uh, so none of it came from the idea that maybe you wanted to get paid in Bitcoin at all. No, actually. Cool. Uh, no, it didn't. No, oh, that, that's cool. Um, uh, that's interesting, you know, so uh, you, you were explaining the uh, the truth oriented messages. Um, so why did you choose the uh, the guy folks mask? Yeah, like like so, were you using that before Bitcoin? I guess is my question. Um, I wasn't using it before Bitcoin. I actually had like another sort of icon that I was using that had like a. It was sort of a. Fa it's actually a billikin is what it's called. So it's like a mascot, and it has something to do with like the court jester and how he uses like satire and. And comedy and and things like that to actually say the truth so like i always look i always look for a symbol that i feel like i can create into like my own type of icon to really like use as a, like a repeating thing like throughout my art so like that's like a model that i kind of like reused or like i i revived or like recreated that in my new project so i kind of abandoned like my old website my old you know, social medias and all that to go into the bitcoin art because it's a different like you can't really move over your audiences and expect them to be happy when you change that much you know so uh so i basically like moved everything and started new accounts and i started a new art project and i looked and around and said like what what's going to be my icon you know so i thought about mm. satoshi you know i thought about bitcoin and really it's like for me it was a no-brainer and i started like almost immediately you know after my my first few like t-shirt designs i stumbled upon one when i was actually making like a monero like the real story i was making an, a monero t-shirt with a partner in crypto apparel i had at the time <laughs> um and that like third eye like section like i actually put the very first one and the only one that i ever did with monero I actually put that logo in there and then I thought, you know, but Satoshi, like this, this is like some fluffy pony, like Ricardo Spagni or whatever, like <laughs> that guy's not even anonymous, you know, it's not Bitcoin. So I like used it one time for a t-shirt and then I was like, you know what, I'm going to actually just put the Bitcoin logo there and like, I'm going to make this my thing for a bit, you know? And uh, so that was like in 2018, early 2018, like when I first started, uh, this art project and I, I've kind of ran with it since and I think like a lot of people have, like kind of made a claim on that as well because like you kind of like it's it's a natural association in my in my oh, book yeah. like if I wouldn't have like really gone so hard on it to make it my brand I think like 
you know, it, it's kind of like free, free, uh, what do you call it? Like, it, it's like anyone can kind of lay their claim on like an yeah, image. It's public domain. Yeah, yeah. But, when, but right. So I, I think like putting the, the logo on the forehead, basically, like making that one design decision. And then the, the rest of the mask, if you if you really pay attention enough, it's like, yeah, I, I redesigned the entire thing. Oh yeah, but it's obviously based on the Guy Fox mask, you know. Oh yeah, so, but still, yeah. it's it's I still I I absolutely love it. So, um, let me ask you this: Did you uh, did you see the movie uh, V for Vendetta? I have. It's cool. been a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while since I uh, since I've seen the movie, but I have. Because obviously there's like, you know, the, the, there's a lot of interesting association, right, in, in like the, the symbolism and everything. So, I mean, for me, I, I got to be honest, the second I saw it on Twitter, I was like, I, I had to go and th- like, just keep running through your feed, you know, like right away when I oh, saw it. Really? Yeah, because I was just like, oh, this is fantastic. And then obviously I saw that you had a store and the stickers and I was like, all right, he's got swag. <laughs> so, oh cool man so yeah. how long how long ago was that if you don't that was that? uh what uh you, I, I think that was probably about i'd say within six months that okay. uh I, I ordered some stickers from you and uh and obviously i got the uh um uh the collab that you did you know with uh, uh with crypto cloaks and uh right you know the uh the litho okay so yeah cool man yep and uh, what's it called? I also uh, I, I'm on the list for that uh, the uh, the little mask that you're making. Oh right! I love yeah. masks. Like I think they're amazing. I have the Mr. Robot mask. I have the uh, the mask from like uh, the I don't know if you're a fan of uh, cartoons from the '80s, but uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like the the late '80s, early '90s. Uh, oh yeah, like, man, those were my favorite. Casey Jones, the okay. uh, the the mask that he had. I have a like a you know a reproduction of that, and obviously I have the you know the guy folks mask. And anyways, I'm I'm just a huge fan of that stuff. Like I just think it's really cool. So yeah, man, I, I do. I, <laughs> I, I agree, man. It's really like, I have this thing with the AR masks now that I'm doing too. Like I'm doing them on Instagram. Right. So, cause they just oh. have like a pretty, a pretty good platform for that. But, uh, today I'm like testing my first like animated mask. So it's like, I think I want to do some like really different stuff with that. Like kind of like the, like the roar shark, roar shark. Is that what? Yeah. Roar shack. Rorschach, yeah. Totally not like, spelt that way, though. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So something like that, you know, with that kind of idea of, like, a morphing mask. But, like, I got – I finally figured out today how to do, like, a moving AR mask because I have, like, a, a series of masks uh, that you use your in- Instagram uh, cameras for. Have you seen those, by the way? I have not. Okay. And, and I okay. should follow you on Instagram is what is what I'm understanding from this. Yeah, I mean, I do post like yeah, like I do post like a lot of like story stuff with with mm. like more more uh, the filters and photos and stuff. But That's yeah, cool. man. So yeah, on Instagram I have that, um, and I'd like to to see if I can get it like outside of Instagram as well. But that's where I'm at for the AR stuff, and people love that, man. Like I have a female version, like a male version, and uh, people are always like sharing photos with it and stuff. That's very cool. Yeah, it's cool to all see right. it. It's like it's like this we're all Satoshi thing and it's like actually like manifesting like that. That's you know, fantastic. Cool. So, I I mean, what are you uh, what, I guess what are your thoughts on the, you know, the the future of uh I guess like your 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 branding? Like uh, uh like right now I see you're doing like a lot of like uh collaborations with like different Bitcoin artists. I mean, I obviously uh you know, will give a shout out to uh um uh, Brecky von Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, he, he has like two different names, I think. There, there's there's just Brecky, right, and then Brecky von Bitcoin. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> give a shout out right, to him because yeah. he does some really awesome Bitcoin art. And uh, and there's a, another two gentlemen. Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know their names, uh, but I saw one of them posted up some really like a nice picture of like all this Bitcoin art, like a shelf, and then he had put your your litho that you did in the back. Oh, Vizik. Vizik, that's right. Vizique. Shout out to Vizik. Yeah, awesome guy, man, and like big time collector, of like all the trinkets <laughs> and art, like physical art. He's not so big into the the digital stuff yet, but we'll see. Probably when we get like a lot of NFTs going on Bitcoin, he'll probably get into that too. 
I I mean that I had to save that picture that he put up. I'm like that is just amazing. Yeah, man, it's very awesome. cool. Yeah, I feel really like honored to be in that that shrine. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. It, it's definitely something. Yeah, man. So what? Uh, yeah. So uh, what's going on with the uh, with the future? Any uh, any thoughts? Or are you just gonna keep doing some art? Any any thoughts on the uh, the logo? Any additions? Um, so yeah, man, I mean, like I'm really just branching out and making stuff that I've been wanting to make for a long time now. So we have, uh, the Bitcoin 2020 event is like coming up this month in uh, San Francisco, uh, March 27th, 28th. So I'm going to be bringing like a lot of like stuff that I, I had made, um, patches and, you know, like these keychains with the Satoshi mask and, We'll see if we get like another couple things like produced with a couple partners of mine that maybe we'll be announcing like before then. But really, man, like I'm trying to make like 3D stuff. I want to get into uh, um, actually like collectible dolls. So I have this concept, oh, yeah. uh, like like another characterization that I have of Satoshi that I have one old piece uh, that I started with. I want to do like I want to fully render this thing in 3D and make like some some dolls you know so maybe maybe out of like a cheaper metal something like that like a like a bronze or something like that but uh definitely want to get into that so like a lot of fabrication and like more hands-on stuff because i i really think like you know for some of my pieces like i consider fine art you know like it's good to sell it on like a really nice paper with like really you know good printing process and all that but I want to kind of do like more hands-on stuff too, to kind of just, you know, spread the propaganda, man, you know, spread the message, the better money, you know, if people are holding it, they're sticking it. That's why I focus so much on stickers and stuff. Like I really like as much as I want to like get deep into the concepts and really, you know, like make something good. Like I, I do want to spread the message as well, you know? So I'm really focused on the commercial aspect of like getting as many units out, you know, like just, getting stickers in people's hands, getting stuff that, you know, they're going to leave on the table and people are going to say, what's that? You know, all that stuff starts conversations about Bitcoin, you know? So I, I feel like really like if we're going to make an impact or like if an artist is going to make an impact, like for people who aren't already involved, like you got to do that type of stuff, man. You know, that's a very good point, you know? And, and I like that you like that. And, and I definitely uh, want to, you know, give a shout out to, uh, you know, the, the amount of, I guess I'd say like the work that you put into it because they're definitely the best quality stickers I've actually ever purchased. <laughs> so, oh, really? and, and cool, I'm like man. a huge, like I'm a huge sticker collector. I like all kinds of stuff like that. Stickers, oh, to, okay. you know, garbage pail kids and stuff like that. I love, you know, any kind of like eighties toys or things like that. It's so for me, it just, it totally, you know, the fact that you did it like that. And then when I saw the quality of them, like I, I haven't been able to stick them on anything, to be honest. No, okay. I, I I gave a few away uh, because I, I wanted people to have them because they were like, wow, this is really nice. I'm like, you like it? You got to keep it, you know? So that way it keeps them always thinking. But other than that, I I can't stick them anywhere, man. <laughs> you just, okay. You made them too good. Like so they're, you're just saying, they're, yeah. They're like you art pieces. You might as well find some, some little frames for them <laughs> yeah. or something, man. No, I mean, yeah. that's actually... I've had a lot of people do that too. Like <laughs> a lot of people just put them in little frames and, you know... You have no choice. Like, they're that good that they're frameable. So. Thanks, man. I'm glad you think so. So what what was it that you liked so much about it? Like, the, um, it, the it, size of them or just the quality of the vinyl or whatever? Definitely. Okay, so, I mean, the size, number one, is is good. But it also makes it so that you, you can't stick it on something small. So right away, that eliminates, like, a lot of, a lot of different things. Right. That, that right. you could possibly stick it on. So it forces people to have to put it onto a table or a chair or something like that. Right. You know? But I just I, I like the uh, I, I really like the the quality. It, okay. it really it really is like the feel and everything like that. Like you can you can tell that this is like a good sticker that's not just going to like you're going to stick it. And like two weeks later, half of it's going to peel off, you know, or the top layer is going to, you know, start to peel right right yeah man they so, actually do pretty well in the sun like i've had some that have been up for like a year and you know the color's still on them so they're they're pretty bad. good man that's one of the one of the advantages of like being here in in mexico i i 
don't think we covered this, but I, I'm living in Mexico uh, cool. full time for the most part um, since early 2018. So when I made that decision to, to pursue this full time, I moved here um, and it's made it a lot easier for me to establish myself because like, you know, cost of rent is like a lot cheaper here, but also like you can get pretty quality materials for like a pretty good cost here. So, you know, like I'm shipping to you guys in the United States and like shipping does kind of like cost a little bit more, but at least like I get good stuff, you know? So that's fantastic. And I got some, sometimes people order like a hundred stickers, you know, 500 stickers. So like, I know these things are getting around, you know? And I think that nice. like the more people see like the quality, hopefully like, you know, more people buy them and stick them around, you know? So have you been approached to, uh, to start selling to other vendors? Yeah, I mean, like cool. now I'm I'm getting more into like instead of just doing the same. My my kind of rule of thumb has been like if I can do it myself, like I don't need a partner about it. But like if they they they're making something like better than I can make, or like you know, there's some kind of like oh wow, it's a, a wallet company that wants to sell these things, and like you know, it's a product that they want my art on. Like I'm more looking for that, and I, I'm in talks with a couple big you know, wallet guys actually. So I think, uh, you'll, you'll be seeing something this year for sure. Sweet. Um, yeah, man. So I'm, I'm excited <laughs> about it too. Cause they're like innovative projects, but, uh, that like great application to like put like a certain style of art that I make. Um, but so yeah, I'm, I'm working on that. Um, but yeah, man, like, you know, like crypto cloaks is like doing cool stuff with 3d printing and like that stuff, like, for what we're selling these items for like the quality is like really you know like i i think we actually undercut ourselves a bit on the first run but uh you know like it's really like they're making like a custom product with like lots of good features and like a good price you know so uh there that's like that's not something that i can find like too too well in mexico here so what they're doing like you know good to partner with them for you know I always recommend to anybody that wants to get a lightning shell that they should visit Crypto Cloaks. I have two lightning shells from him, um, uh, from them, sorry. And it, they're absolutely, you know, hands down, like just fantastic quality and amazing shipping. And of course, you know, for, for people like me who like cool swag, they, you know, like you order from Crypto Cloaks, you get a cool little box and, you know, it's just, uh, it gives you some stickers. <laughs> so anyways, it's pretty cool. Awesome, man. So that was my discussion with uh, Lucho Paletti. Um, I, obviously, I'm going to put his, uh, you know, a link to his uh, website and his Twitter contact details in the show notes. And of course, if you want to support the Fun with Bitcoin podcast, you can head on over to uh, MoetaRags.com and go to All Clothing and Fun with Bitcoin podcast, and you can check out our swag. You can also head over to FunWithBitcoin.com for everything fun with Bitcoin. Uh, anytime I find something interesting or, a, you know, a link that I want to share or some kind of an article, uh, I'll always I'll always end up uh, getting it posted up there. Um, the other the other thing is that I wanted to mention for for this podcast. Um, it, it's it's kind of interesting, right? Because I, I've I've interviewed now at this point well over 60, 70 people. And, you know, you never know what you're going to get with with each one. And it's really interesting because I, I find that um, you know, people surprise you, you know, you, you like, uh, like Lucho for me, you know, because he's, he's an artist, I, I, I guess I, I wasn't really sure, you know, what to expect out of the conversation, you know, but he, he really, anyways, he, he really does let his art speak for him. So anyways, um, hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a nice quick pod and, uh, yeah, going to catch you all on the next one. So everybody stay safe, stack your sats and be careful. <laughs>